Hello everyone, I'm Gauri Parvati of class 8. Me and my friends Sinia, Tanushri, Mahalakshmi, Renuka and Varsha are going to guide you through the topic Origin and Growth of Astronomy in India. Sinia from class 8b here to talk about the Indian Astronomy, Astrology and the Vedas. Astronomy in India The first records of astronomy in India date back to at least 2000 BCE where they are found in the Rig Veda around C 1700 to 1100 BCE which is one of the primary and the foremost texts of Hinduism. The ancient Indian astronomers used the stars and the planets to create astrological charts devising sophisticated mathematical models and developing many interesting theories many of which passed into the Islamic world and Europe. Vedanga was the first Vedic text to mention astronomical data, records events going back as far as 4000 BC, although many archer astronomers believe that this text may include observations from as early as 11000 BC. They point out that some of the records may have been copied from the earlier manuscripts, but this is an area where more research is needed as many of the references are unclear and couched in religious terminology. Indian Astrology Jyotisha is the traditional Hindu system of astrology. Horoscopic astrology is a form of astrology that uses a horoscope, a visual representation of the heavens for a specific moment in time in order to interpret the inherent meaning underlining the alignment of the planets at that moment. Vedas The Vedas are a large body of religious texts originating in ancient India. Thank you. Shri, I am going to talk about Indian Astronomy and Siddhantic Era. Introduction on Indian Astronomy and Siddhantic Era The ancient Indian astronomers used the stars and the planets to create astrological charts and read omens. A new branch of astronomy diverging from the Vedas began called the Siddhantic Era. It began with a series of books called the Siddhant which means solutions. Aryabhata Aryabhata added to the heliocentric theory proposing the idea that the moon reflects the light of the sun. Varhimira Indian astronomers proposed that the same force holding objects to the earth also held the celestial bodies in place. This was an advance upon Inex Minder's idea of equilibrium and a recognition of a proto-gravitational theory. Long before Newton, Varhyamira proposed that there must be some type of attractive force keeping objects stationary. Brahmagupta, the Siddhantic astronomers also understood that the Earth was spherical and attempted to calculate the circumference of the planet. In the 7th century CE, the astronomer Brahmagupta arrived at a figure of 36,000 km for the circumference of the Earth, very close to the actual figure. Thank you. here to present about the first Siddhantic astronomy. Historical Siddhanta, the historical era began with Aryabhata AD 476 whose work in uh, AD 499 was the first astronomical work. Uh, following Aryabhata, we had Varahamira AD 587, Brahmagupta AD 598 and Lal AD 638 or 768. Now we will be seeing about historical Siddhanta. It is often called as Z era. The first uh, Z table was translated from Sanskrit and it included the number 0 among the simpler Indian number system. Seeing about Z astronomy. Three types of Zs. Z, Sabi, the calculated table. Z, English, a simplified table. Post Siddhantic Astronomy The look at the ancient astronomy has concentrated very much upon Mesopotamia, European astronomy, and Islamic Golden Age. However, in any study of astronomy, it is impossible to ignore the work of the great astronomers. In this period, a new branch of astronomy diverging from the Vedas called Siddhantic Era, it is also in the book name called Solutions. Siddhantic Era chartered the solar year, including equatrix, lunar period, Solar lunar eclipse and planetary movements. Thank you. Historical growth of astronomy in India. Indian astronomy. Indian 
Indian's astronomy history stretches from prehistoric to modern times. Indian astronomy can be dated to the period of Indus Valley Civilization or earlier. The oldest known text about astronomy is Vedanga Jodisha. The division of the years were on the basis of seasons. In the Vedanga Jodisha, the beginning of the year starts with the winter solstice. Time was divided into yoga or ages. History of Indian Astronomy Some of the earliest forms of astronomy can be dated to the period of Indus Valley Civilization. Some cosmological concepts are present in the Vedas are notations of movement of heavenly bodies, astronomical observation being necessitated by spatial and temporal requirements of correct performance of religious ritual. Thus the Shulpa Shudras text dedicated to altar construction discusses advanced mathematics and basic astronomy. Vedanka Jyotisha is another of the earliest known Indian texts on astronomy. Later astronomers mention the existence of various Siddhantas, among them a text known as Surya Siddhanta dates to the Gupta period and was received by Aryabhata. Early History of India Early cultures identified celestial objects with gods and spirits. They related these objects and their movements to phenomena such as rain, drought, seasons and tides. Indian astronomy dated to the period of Indus Valley Civilization. In India, astronomy in the Indian subcontinent dates back to the period of Indus Valley Civilization. The oldest extent of Indian astronomical texts is the Vedanga Jyotish dating from the Vedic period. Aryabhatta in his magnum Abbas Aryabhatiya propounded a computational system based on a planetary model. Astronomy was advanced during Shunga Empire and known as Golden Age of Indian Astronomy. Indian astronomers by the 6th century believe that comets were celestial bodies that reappeared periodically. Bhaskara too was the head of the astronomical observatory at Ujjain. Thank you. Indian astronomy has a long history stretching from prehistoric to modern times. Some of the earliest books of Indian astronomy can be dated to the period of Indus Valley Civilization or earlier. Astronomy later developed as a discipline of Vedanga or one of the auxiliary disciplines associated with the study of Vedas. Dating 1500 BCE or older, the oldest known text is the Vedanga Jodisha dated to 1400 to 1200 BCE. Indian astronomy was influenced by Greek astronomy beginning in the 4th century BCE and through the early centuries. Good morning all, I am Kanjka Shri of Class 8 here to talk about Brahmagupta's biography. Brahmagupta was born on, on 598 CE. He was the son of Jugano Gupta. 
Brahmagupta's books. Brahmagupta composed Brahmagupta Siddhanta. Brahmagupta's discovery. He discovered the longitudes of the plants and receiving and settings. The moon's creation and conjunctions of the planets. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Santosh of ATI. I'm here to talk about Brahmagupta. Brahmagupta was born on 596 CE. Brahmagupta was the head of the astronomical observatory at Yujan. He died between 660 and 670. Brahmagupta's discovery. He calculated the length of the solar year. He indicated the earth is nearer to the moon than the sun. He calculated, he calculated that Earth is a sphere of circumference around 36,000 kilo, 36, km. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sarini. Our topic is Father of Astronomy. I have done a PPT about Vainu Babu, who is known as the father of modern Indian astronomy. Vainu Babu was born on 10th August 1927 in Chennai. He attended the Harvard Graduate School of Astronomy for his PhD after obtaining postgraduate degree from the Madras University. Vainu Babu was an Indian astronomer and president of the International Astronomical Union. He helped to establish several astronomical institutions in India. Vainu Babu was taking pictures of the night sky. He spotted a bright moving object which he had rightfully understood to be a comet and it would reappear only after 60,000 years. The International Astronomical Union officially named the comet as the Babu Bok Nuclear Comet and it is the only comet with an Indian name. He also received the Donohe Comet Medal of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Vainu Babu was appointed to head a team of astronomers to build an observatory in, at Nanital. The Vainu Babu Observatory is one of the main observatories of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Later, a number of in, discoveries were made from the Vainu Babu Observatory. Vainu Babu Telescope is situated in the Jabadi Hills of Tamil Nadu. It is operated as a national facility of optical astronomy. Thank you. Good morning. I am Dharnia from class 8A and today I am going to be speaking about Vain Babu who is the father of Indian astronomy. Vain Babu's observatories. Vain Babu in Izamiya Observatory. The Vain Babu Observatory is an astronomical observatory owned and operated by the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. He published a scientific paper based on his observations of variable stars and also the starry objects. Vain Babu Observatory in Tamil Nadu. The Vainababu Observatory is located at Kavalur in the Javadi Hills near Vaniambadi in Tamil Nadu state. He observes on telescopes. His planning and his vision was demonstrated in this observatory. Thank you. related to planets. Let us have a brief notice of the planets in Vedic Astrology. Classical Vedic Astrology uses seven visible planets, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus and Saturn, along with the two lunar nodes, the North and South nodes, Rahu and Kedu. The Hindu Astrology is based on an elaborate calculation of the positions of these planets at the time of one's birth. Vedic astrology represents these planets of the forces of time which dictates all things. These planets are believed to hold a creative power through which the eternal order of karma and dharma is maintained. Lord Surya, the sun god. Surya is the chief solar deity and one of the other sun of... Lord Surya, the sun god. Surya is the chief, the solar deity of the other just son of Kashyapa and one of his wives Aditi of Indra or of Dyuspita. Lord Surya or the sun god occupies the central place among the Stina Navagrahas facing the east. Lord Chandra, the moon god. Chandra is a lunar deity and then also known as Soma. The moon represents the mind, feminine nature, beauty and happiness. Chandra has a only face and two hands but no body. He is shown holding with white lotuses in his two hands. 
Lord Angaraka and the God of Mars. Mangala is also called as Angaraka, is a ferocious god with four hands. He is considered to be the son of Prithvi, Bhumi, Earth Goddess. He is of Tamas Guna in nature and represents the energetic action, confidence and ego. Lord Buddha, the god of Mercury, Buddha is the son of Chandra, the moon, Tara, Taraka. He is generally represented with four hands, three of his hands holding a sword, a shield and a mace, respectively, while the fourth one is held in usually Varada Mudra. Lord Brahaspati, Lord of Jupiter. Lord Brahaspati, also known as Brahmanaspati, is the guru of Devas and is praised in many hymns of Rig Veda. He is one of Sattva Guna and represents knowledge and teaching. He is often simply known as Guru. Brahaspati is described one of the yellow or golden color and holding a stick, a lotus and his beads. Jupiter symbolizes knowledge, love and spirituality. Lord Sukran, the Lord of Venus. Lord Sukran is the name of the son of Bhrigu and Ushahana and the preceptor of Daityas and the guru of Asuras. Identify with the planet Venus with horrific Shukracharya. Shukra is one of the with complexion middle-aged and is generally shown with four hands riding upon a golden or silver chariot drawn by eight horses. Lord Chaneeswaran, the god of Saturn. Lord Shani is regarded as a troublesome god and capable of breaking fortunes by his influence and position in the planetary system. Lord Shani is generally shown with four hands riding upon a chariot or a buffalo or a vulture. Shani is seen holding a sword, arrows to, and two daggers. Shani is the son of Surya and his tattva or element is air and his direction is west. He is tamas in nature and represents learning, hard way, career and longevity. Lord Rahu Rahu is the god of ascending north lunar node. Rahu may be shown riding a black lion or a seater on a sirhasana throne or in a silver chariot drawn by eight horses. He may have two hands, the right hand carrying a woolen blanket and a book, the left hand being shown empty. If four hands are shown, they can carry a sword, shield and lance, the fourth one being Vardha Mudra. Lord Ketu Ketu is the lord of descending. In Sanskrit, Ketu, Duma Ketu means comet. It is also a shadowy planet and it is depicted as the tail of a demon snake. In the images, he is usually shown, shown with a pope marked body riding upon a vulture and holding a maze. Lord Ketu is the representation of karmic collection, both good and bad, spirituality and supernatural influences. The gemstone of Ketu is cat's eye. Astronomers in the Vedic period The first Indian astronomer in the ancient India is Brahmagupta, one of the most accomplished of the ancient Indian astronomers. The Indian astronomy later developed as a dis disciplined and Vedanga or one of the auxiliary disciplines associated with the studies of the Vedas dating 1500 BCE or older Indian astronomy followed in the 5th to 6th century with the Aryabhata whose Aryabhatas uh, represented the pinnacle of astronomical knowledge at the time. The Indian father of astronomy is Manali Khalid Vaini Bapu who went who went on be fondly remembered as the father of modern India astronomy. Manali Khalid Venu Bapu was born on 10th August 1927 in Hyderabad. The main for astronomers is Galileo Sparkle 
the birth of modern astronomy with its observ- observation of the moon faces of Ven- venus moons around jupiter sunspots and the news that seemingly countless individual stars make up milky way galaxy within days galileo figured out that these stars were actually moons in orbit jupiters and he found more in vedic culture is apart from the innovations references and the deva arakasas and devas the earliest texts and the continuing cycles of the ceremonies related to the calendars vedic astronomy is not based on the use of accurate clocks but fine time limits were defi- it defined in relation to events across the longer durations to preserve correspondence between the lunar and solar year- years intercalary months were inserted at regular intervals thank you Nakshatra and I am going to talk about Alidade. An Alidade or a turning board device is a device that allows one to sight a distant object and use the line of sight to perform tasks. This task can be for example to triangulate a scale map on sight using a plane table drawing for intersecting line in direction of object from two or more point or to measure the angle and horizontal distance. to the object from reference point polar measurement the angle can be measured horizontally vertically or in any chosen plane example some alidate particularly using circular graduation as on astrolabe were called as diopters in latin it is respectively called as diopter and fiducial line Example Alidade is used in Gunsight and Pelorus. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Amitesh and today I am going to talk about Astrolabe. An Astrolabe is an ancient astronomical instrument that was a handheld model of the universe. It is a two-dimensional model of cel- of the celestial sphere. With this instrument an astronomer could make quite accurate measurements of the following things position of celestial objects it is an instrument used for recording time and for obs- observational purposes thank you hello everyone i am darshan i am going to explain about astrorium what is an astrorium an astrorium is also called as planetorium is the mechanical representation of the cyclic nature of astronomical object in one time piece it is an astronomical clock thank you in cabin of class 8b Today I am going to talk about astronomical clock. What is an astronomical clock? An astronomical clock is also known as horology. It shows the relative positions of the sun, moon, earth and zodiac constellations. How many astronomical clocks are there? Totally there are 18 astronomical astronomical clocks in the world. Oldest astronomical clock The oldest astronomical clock can be found in Prague's old town city hall and it was built in the period of 1410. Thank you everyone. Armillary sphere in Vedic period. What is armillary sphere? An armillary sphere is a model of objects in the sky consisting of a spherical framework. of rings centered on earth or the sun that represents lines of celestial longitude and latitude and other astronomically important features what was the purpose of armillary sphere armillary sphere was used to demonstrate 
the motion of the stars around the earth when and who invented the armillary sphere the armillary sphere was invented by the greek astronomer eratosthenes around 225 bce thank you good morning we are students of class 8b our topic is space and literature hi i am sabari and i am from class 8b and today i am going to talk about space literature The setting of a piece of literature is the time and place in the which the story takes place. Space time definition: the four dimensional continuum having three spatial coordinates and one temporal coordinate in which all physical quantities may be located. The space in literature studies in the field of literary theory, geopoliticism, is an ind- interdisciplinary method of literary analysis that focuses not only on such temporal data as relations between the life and time of the author. As in biographical criticism, the history of the text, as in textual criticism, or the story, are studied by narratology. space time in physical science single concept that recognizes the union of space and time first proposed by the mathematician hermann minkowski in 1908 as a way to reformulate albert einstein's special theory of relativity in 1905 thank you hi i am udaya of class 8b i am going to talk about space in literature the space in literature studies in the field of literary theory geocrism is an interdisciplinary method of literary alliance that focus not only one such temporally data as relation between the life and time of author as in biographical criticism the history of the text as in textual criticism or the story as studied by narratorology space time is physical science single concept that recognizes the union of space time thank you i am nitin of class 8b and i'm going to talk about space and literature space the domain of settings and surroundings of events characters and objects in literary narrative along with other domains story character time and ideology constitutes a fictional universe literary space represents an author's model of the world expressed in the language of spatial representation in a literary work space models different relations of the world picture temporary social ethical and others thank you Hello everyone. Today we the students of class 8A are here to show you and talk about the astronomical myths. We may have heard about many astronomical myths and normal myths. So today we've picked up the famous and popular myths that have been surrounding us. So hope you clarify all the doubts that you have had about all these myths. Thank you. First lesson here to explain about solar eclipses. The great god Brahma reveals the gods and as well as the deities in the mythology giving amrit of faith. The original myth of creation, Prajapati developed a desire for his own daughter. Interestingly, the mother of Usha is never defined, but because of this relation of incest towards the other gods were upheld, they approached Rudra or Shiva to prevent this incest from occurring. On the other hand, Usha herself embarrassed by the attention kept changing her form out, but each time Prajapati also took the equivalent male form out of his desire for her. 
It is one of these forms when Prajapati is an antelope that is reflected in the sky in the form of Orion Taurus. Prajapati is the Taurus. The day or the day's head is the modern constellation Capricorn. Sirius was the deer pacer who shot the arrow. Orion the hunter with the bow and arrow is Rudra trying to stop him from the sun. Hi friends, my name is Nishim, 8th standard. Now I am going to talk about solar eclipse. Solar eclipse occur when moon gets between earth and the sun. Without the eye protection can cause us eclipse blindness which even destroy the cell in retina. It is never safe to look a eclipse on a camera but we can do it by a pinhole protection. Some myths are people are not allowed to worship the idols of God and one should not put anything at all. I am Nires of 8A telling about Cosmogony. Definition Cosmogony. Cosmos is the meaning of order gonos the greek word for birth cosmogony a theory concerning the creation of the universe cosmogony the study of hypothesis regarding the origin of the solar system theory cosmogony is a scientific theory concerning the coming into existence or origin of the cosmos or universe or about what sentient beings preserve as reality came to be in the ancient Indian cosmogony, the earth is sustained on the backs of elephants who are themselves standing on the back of cosmic turtle. Thank you. Coming to Omnanal's present care, I am Akshata of class AK and here to present class central model Jandar Manzar. In 18th century, Maharaj Jai Singh II of Jaipur constructed by Jandar Manzar's totally in New Delhi, Jaipur, Mathura, Ujjain and Varanasi. These were constructed between 1724 and 1735. I am Anikesh from class 8B. Jandar Mandar is an observatory constructed by Maharaj Jai Singh of Jaipur in 1724. The essential purpose of Jandar Mandar is to accumulate the astronomical tables which in turn would help to predict the time and movement of celestial bodies such as moon, sun and other planets. Thank you. Watching our class 8 project on astronomy in Vedic period. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.